So, we are just a couple of days away from FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to start the new FIFA the right way. Every year, I make a video like this, how to start the brand new FIFA, and today is no different. You guys always seem to like these videos as well. I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to use your time efficiently, how to use your FIFA points from pre-order, for example, all that good stuff, and some new news in the brand new FIFA. If you do enjoy this video, please leave a like down below and subscribe if you guys are new around here. We're trying to hit 250k before the end of the year hopefully we can do it all right first things first getting started on ultimate team now the first thing i want to say to you is be smart with your hours on wednesday we're getting early access but we're also getting the web app in the evening don't be that guy that wants to see the animations on the console i know it looks fun and i know it looks cool but it's never a good idea to waste your hours that you get on early access on console on menu stuff that you can always do on the web app you can do literally everything on the web app as i show you here um you can go through everything pick your kits your players do sbcs and open up your welcome backpacks all on the web app as i do right here it's super easy make sure you're using your hours for uh gameplay essentially i would say it's probably a better shout to use it for gameplay than anything else um last year i used most of my hours on div rivals i did play the odd squad battles here and there as well i think squad battles is a good thing to play because you know it's not going to be uh fun to grind 40 games of squad battles if it still is 40 games of squad battles but you are going to get that nice base of coins and packs from squad battles and div rivals if you're playing them both uh, during your time. And plus, with it being capped at, say, 40 games, let's say div rivals is capped at games as well. Um, I just think it's probably a better shout to play both of them and spread out your ability of making coins. Now, I'll be lying to you if I said that squad battles were amazing packs in return right and apparently according to a few sources one of them being anonymous in foot who i think has been very reliable since now uh he said that apparently elite one and lower uh have actually been nerfed on squad battles the rewards have been nerfed and i mean it's not like getting gold two gold one elite three was necessarily amazing rewards before for the grind that you put in but at this stage in the game you can get so many players that are very nice for example this Jao felix would have sold for a little bit at the start of the game um i think he's extinct actually about like 18 k so you've got a guaranteed 18,000 coins i think he went up to over 25k when his price range got updated um just from that one draw felix and that's just from playing a few squad battles games so little 81 80 82 rated players you know uh, an alfonso davies you can get some coins off of that sort of stuff um you never know you can always get a, a lucky nice pull um and make yourself some coins back for just playing some offline games i'm not recommending that you absolutely grind the living daylight out of squad battles and play every single game and spend your entire 10 hours playing squad battles but you know playing 10 15 games if you have the time at the end of your hours is never a bad shout and because a lot of people don't actually play early access as much as for example as hardcores do you don't get the casual players playing you'll find that the points are actually a little bit lower as well to get the ranks so i think it's definitely a good shout and then for rivals i'd say the same sort of thing um it's always nice to get a nice base of coins and base of packs you can get um from uh playing div rivals as well you know on, on a thursday i don't know if it's still gonna be thursday for div rival rewards or not um but on a thursday last year you know taking tradable coins taking tradable packs or untradable packs you'd still get a nice base of players or packs uh in return for playing div rivals and with the new system apparently we're getting more rewards uh based on gameplay which is sick so we could be getting more than just a couple of packs on a thursday you might get the odd reward after a game here or there so it's actually not a bad shout to play div rivals too and i'd say prioritize the online gameplay because it'll also make you a better fifa player now i want to talk to you guys about the most effective way to use your fifa points that you get from your pre-order or if you do buy FIFA points. Now, the first thing people are going to tell you straight away is play draft, play draft. Like, draft is going to be the most um, told thing. Like, people are going to tell you to play draft uh, as much as possible. And I understand that if you are good enough to win a draft and you can win multiple drafts and you have, for example, um, the ability to win draft after draft after draft quite easily, then yeah, draft is not a bad shout. If you're a good player, draft is not a bad shout. But... For players like myself who aren't that great at FIFA, I'm, I'm an average player without a good team. Um, and when the teams are pretty even in draft, I'm, I'm not the greatest in draft. Uh, and for the players that don't have a lot of time on their hands, draft is not the world's best option uh, to spend your FIFA points on. I think that what a lot of people might want to do, what you might want to think about is maybe saving your FIFA points for once to watch or, or even opening your FIFA points straight away on packs. Um, the one thing that I will say is, 
to play 4,600 FIFA points worth of drafts if you're winning all of them, it's going to take you, uh, I'd say, a normal person with, you know, normal commitments, responsibilities, and a job, probably a week to finish those FIFA points. Because you've got, what, 16, 17 drafts there out of 4,600 FIFA points. And whilst that might not seem like a lot, it might not sound like a lot, that is quite a lot of drafts to play. And I think the average person uh, maybe doesn't have enough time to do all that in one night or two days or three days. So if you are looking to spend your FIFA points, it's not a bad shout to go ahead and spend them on packs. Now, if you're also buying FIFA points, um, I kind of looked at uh, the average return. Now, for the 4,600 FIFA points that we get at the start of the game, I'd say this is your kind of average return. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see it. I've enhanced it for you guys. So um, I looked at it. 4,600 FIFA points is about 30 premium gold packs and one single gold pack, a 5K pack. The average discard for, um, you know, a 7.5K pack is, I would say, between 1.4 and 1.8K. Um, I'd say the average is closer to 1.4 because you get more packs with just three non-rares and consumables in it. Uh, I'd say probably in 4,600 points, you probably get one pool that's between 10 and 20k. Now, we're going off of, like, absolutely awful pack look because you don't want to sit there and be like, okay, well, you know, let's go off good pack look and I'm going to get this and that because you get very disappointed. You want to... With EA, you want to expect the bare minimum, the, the lowest you could possibly get. And then anything, anything you get above that is is good. That You're happy with that. So uh, I'd say you maybe get one pull in that many FIFA points. That's over 10k, 10 to 20k. Maybe it's an in -four. Maybe it's just a player that goes for 12 to 15k. Um, an average of 10k from expensive consumables. That's like 1 to 2k from chem styles slash position changes maybe um and if you're selling like contracts and stuff like that i'd say you get an extra ten thousand coins back so i'd say the average return with bad pack look is 67 to seventy five thousand coins roughly from your pre-order fifa points now that doesn't seem like a lot of coins but if you invest those coins well you could probably make that back to about 150 170k if you're smart with your coins uh what you'll find is that there's a lot of players that start really cheap and then become expensive as we get towards the first weekend league or as more people get the game as well which we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video um as to the point of spending your fee points though if you don't have time for a draft don't feel bad about buying packs like to get a steady uh, coin balance early in the game will leave you in a strong position as well. Um, for a lot of people, what you, what they don't realize is um, they'll go ahead and spend, for example, uh, I don't know, 4,600 FIFA points on draft in a week. And by the end of that week, maybe they've got a couple hundred K. But if they'd gone and spent that on packs and got 100 K from the first day, they could have turned that into three, four, 500 K um, with trading. And, and I think like, although I'm not really a trader, I do understand the concept of trading at the start of the game. It's something I always make a lot of coins on. I've made millions in previous years from the start of the game because it's really not rocket science. It just essentially is um, meta players and, and selling them for a little bit higher on within a week or two. A perfect example of a player I want to show you guys is Marcus Rashford. Now, Rashford at the start of the game was even less than 148k. He was about 120k the very first day. Uh, of the early access on the October 2nd even he was 148k that's on the full release of the game so even before that he was even he was even cheaper before that I don't think we can even actually look at uh, cheaper than that but on the 2nd of October he was 148k and dur during early access I remember picking up Rashford for 80k 90k he actually ended up going up uh, close to the first weekend league. We saw him at heights of 280k, 290k, 270k. Uh, now, I do think he got into a UCL promo, but even before that, at the first weekend league, we, see, we saw him over 210k. And if you have that base of 80, 90, 100,000 coins, a meta player like Rashford, you could probably pick up for half of what he's going to go for towards the first weekend league now i'm not going to sit here and tell you every player i think there's a lot of traders out there that can tell you those kind of players but my point is it's not the worst idea in the world to not play draft because you're going to have the most hardcore sweats in draft from the very very first day and if you ain't the best FIFA player, you ain't going to beat those guys daily. And you ain't going to win every single draft. And it might not end up being worth it for you. Now, I've pulled up a, uh, an I Rate Your Teams video from last year. Just to look at the sort of standard of teams that we looked at uh, last year in the first sort of week of FIFA. This is the early access week. This is the sort of standard of teams. Um, and as you see, they're not amazing. So this kind of, you know, enforces my point that div rivals might be the way to go. Because even... 
without the div rival um, coins that you get, for example, the placement coins, people's teams may be even worse than these teams we're seeing now. And this is after people played um, their div rival placement games and got div rival placement coins. So div rivals might be the way to go if you're someone that's going to spend a little or you know how to trade or you know how to start effectively in this game. Um, you could face some really, really uh, below par teams and have, uh, have some good results go your way in div rivals early uh, and get a good feel for the game. I also think it's quite important just to get a team ready relatively early in the game as well um because as soon as you get on the game and you're playing early access you might want to go straight into gameplay and you don't want to faff about on the console at least wasting your hours trying to buy players so whilst on the web app if you can pick up some players that you might want to put in your team and even if it's a case of playing squad battles first with a really bad team against the ai that's easier than online and then building that team up to then take it online might not be the worst shot in the world. Another point I want to pick up on and this is goes towards making coins again um this is quite important Look out for advanced SBCs because in previous FIFAs, advanced SBC players have gone for a lot of coins. You can make a lot of coins just from advanced SBCs. Now, you don't have to go and complete the SBC. If you've got a player in your club that's, say, Brazilian from a lower tier league or even Brazilian from La Liga like Emerson I got in my welcome backpack, you might find he goes for a little bit of coins because of advanced SBCs. That's the first thing people rush towards is getting that mega pack, that rare mega pack, that premium gold players pack straight away because a lot of people say do advanced SBCs. Well, you might actually find you're in a better position not doing advanced SBCs early and selling coins to people that are doing them and then building up your 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 club before you go towards advanced SBCs. It might not be the worst shout in the world. Um, and you'll find that in these kind of packs, you'll get a lot of non-rares that will go for about 1, 1.2 to 1.5k that you'll find will build a nice steady stream of coins just from advanced SPCs and people buying them for advanced SPCs. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, the sort of ones to watch and pre-order packs that we get. So as you know, on I think the 20, sorry, the 1st of October, we'll get our ones to watch pack. Um, now, a lot of people think it's smart to save their pack when the full team's out, and that might not be a bad shout, to be fair. Um, the reason why I'm always kind of hesitant to save my packs and always just kind of open it straight away is... Um, of a weird feeling and a weird superstition. It's not It's not a real thing, I don't think, but it's just a weird superstition that I have. When a lot of people are opening their packs at the same time, I feel like the pack look is significantly worse. That always just feels like it's me, and I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, uh, when it comes to this ones to watch pack, I would say if you've got the likes of Ronaldo and maybe a few more meta players in Team 1, it might not be a bad shot to pop it on Team 1 because if you get one of those good players, you might have a significant advantage uh, against other people in Div Rivals that maybe are saving their pack. Um... But in terms of the ones to watch back, I kind of just want to show you guys sort of what, what I got and what maybe other people are getting as well and what, what you sort of can get from these packs. Um, I, I don't think that necessarily it was uh, amazing for most people last year. I, I don't think the ones to watch team was particularly great last year either. I mean, I, I this, this is the card I got Osman and he turned out to actually get a couple upgrades. Um, but with a really good ones to watch team or two teams this year, uh, I would say wait and see who's in the team and then if you don't have let, let's say the first team has got Ronaldo but no Messi you know that opening it for team two you've got the chance of Ronaldo and Messi but also they're very very hard to get so I just wanted to talk about that real quick um and just sort of say patience is key but also maybe maybe not in cases as well um it's it, it's all personal preference i think with the ones to watch back and that sort of stuff the last thing i'll say as well is uh you can actually get for uh, now apparently a guaranteed 83 plus uh pack for winning draft and supposedly in different uh packs this year supposedly you can get uh like 84 plus minimums in 100k packs and that sort of stuff that would be able to get on the store um just some food for thought don't know how true that is or not it's what people are leaking at the moment whether that's going to happen or not we'll see um tomorrow i think game changers get the full game i don't i know that most of you guys won't either um I think, I think it's pretty much just game changers uh we'll get the, the full game tomorrow so expect to see streams and content on the full game tomorrow whereas we get it on wednesday hopefully tuesday soft release but most likely wednesday uh and that's when i'll be producing content and whatnot then so thank you all for watching this video if you guys have enjoyed please leave a like down below subscribe if you guys are near and here and i'll see you lads later